What is up, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, I'm kicking off the Green Lantern Comprehensive Reading Order in Collected Editions. This is going to be a part one of probably three. So, let's get this started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is thank our patrons for voting for Green Lantern Reading Order. The second thing I want to say is, holy shit, there's a lot I had to go back. It took me a week to put this together and reread a few things and make sure I had them in the right order. So I'm going to make this into a three-part series. I thought about doing two, but there's just so much to talk about. And even though it doesn't look like a lot of material, there's a lot to say. And you all know I like to talk. Another thing I will add is that I'm only talking about Green Lantern titles. I'm not going to talk about one-shots like Traitor or Circle of Fire or even titles like Red Lanterns. I want to focus on Green Lantern and I guess later on Green Lantern Corps and Green Lantern Emerald Warriors. So keep that in mind. And speaking of talking, here's a quick ad from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions, up to 50% off cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels is currently offering up to 80% off over 250 Marvel Omnibus editions, Marvel Masterworks, Deluxe Hardcovers, and more. The sale runs through Sunday, September 15th, while supplies last. Some of the deals this week include Captain America by Mark Waid, Ron Garney, and Andy Kubert Omnibus. The retail price is $125, but at 50% off, you'll only pay $62.50. Also on sale is Deadpool and Company Omnibus. The retail price is $125, but at 55% off, you'll be paying $56.25. You can find the sale by clicking on the banner on Cheap Graphic Novels' homepage or by clicking the link in the description below. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Okay, let's kick this reading order off with Emerald Dawn. This is the six-issue miniseries that retold the origin of Hal Jordan. It is written by Keith Giffen, Gerard Jones, and Jim Osley, and drawn by M.D. Bright. Uh, it was a six-issue miniseries. Batman had Year One, Superman had Man of Steel, Wonder Woman had George Perez's Wonder Woman, retelling their origin. As you all know, my DC started after Crisis on Infinite Earths, and this is where everything began with... Emerald Dawn. It's a retelling of Hal's origin, how he became a Green Lantern, and how he started training with the Green Lantern Corps. A lot of characters are reintroduced and reimagined in this. It's a great starting off point if you want to get to know the character of Hal Jordan. Again, I didn't get into the Silver Age or Golden Age. Um, I did try to read the uh, Silver Age Green Lantern books, but not for me. But this is where everything was redone. Now, there was a follow-up to this series that was called Emerald on 2 with the exact same team, and it followed the adventures of Hal Jordan as a Green Lantern. But when I started collecting these in 2006, that trade paperback was long out of print and going for well over $100 on the third-party market. Now, a couple of years ago, DC started collecting these as Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. We only had one volume because of the whole Gerard Jones thing that happened. So I don't think we'll see any more of those collections, but I could be wrong. The next book is The Road Back. This is Green Lantern, The Road Back. This thing is old as crap. At least it's trade paperback. This was supposed to be part of volume two of Green Lantern, but like I said, canceled. So... This is uh, the story of Hal Jordan. As you can see, he's a little bit older now. He's an ex-Green Lantern of Sector 2814. He decided that he wanted to give up being a Green Lantern because being a Green Lantern severely affected his personal life and he just wanted to start living a normal life. But Guy Gardner is really upset that he is the Green Lantern of Sector 2814, so he's coming back into Hal's life against Hal's will. Man refuses to leave him alone. So in the story, Hal John Stewart, who's also the 2814 Green Lantern, have to take on a mad renegade guardian. So that's what kicks off the original eight issues. Next up is the death and return of Superman. Why do I have this in here? Because of this issue right here. This is Reign of the Superman. It's part of the Reign of Superman, but it is Green Lantern 46. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sticking just to Green Lantern and Green Lantern Core, keeping away from things like Red Lantern uh, and other series like that, or one-shots like Traitor. But I think it's important to talk about this book because something important happens here 
that affects the life of Hal for years to come. And without giving anything away, it is a very important read. And you should read The Death and Return of Superman. It's part of this iconic character. Now, that's a huge chunk of Green Lantern that we're missing from issues 8 to 46. But that's all that's collected. Now, we're moving on to the next big chapter in not only Hal Jordan's life, but the life of the Green Lanterns. This kicks off with, by the way, this is Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner, Volume 1. It hurts to look at this because there were originally three volumes and they could have gone on forever, but Volume 3 got canceled. Uh, anyway, this is Ron Mars. He takes over the book and changes the life of Hal Jordan. Now, normally when I talk about these things, I don't like to dive into spoilers, uh, but I am going to talk a little bit about what happens with Hal Jordan and the introduction of Kyle Rayner. I'm not going to say how it happens, but I will say that something happens to Hal where he loses his way and becomes a villain known as the Parallax. And through a series of events, there are no more Green Lanterns after this. The Green Lanterns are gone because something happens to them. I'm not going to give spoilers. And their only hope, the, on the Guardian's only hope, is this kid named Kyle Rayner, who becomes the new Green Lantern of Sector 2814, while Hal Jordan becomes the villain known as the Parallax. So this trade paperback right here collects issues 48 through 57 of Green Lantern, Rebels 94 number 1, and New Titans 116. Now, Emerald Twilight and New Dawn have been collected separately before, but this is the first time we've had them together. That's all I will say about that without going into spoilers. Like I said, I'm going to go through a few spoilers from time to time. Uh, but not very much, by the way. If you've ever wondered what women in refrigerators are, this is the volume that explains it, and this is the douchebag that makes that happen. Moving on to Green Lantern Kyle Rayner Volume 2. Collecting issues of Green Lantern 58 through 65. New Titans 124 to 125, Dark Star 34, and Guy Gardner Warrior 27 through 28. Oh yeah, and, and Damage, number 16, is also part of that crossover. And this is where Kyle has to face the Parallax. So it's Kyle versus Hal Jordan. And that return is freaking awesome. It really felt so weird to see Hal Jordan as a villain. But, I, I you know, I get it. I, I know what they were going for. I will say that this is the book, this is the run by Ron Mars and Daryl Banks that made me a Green Lantern fan. Like, the, Kyle Rayner is my Green Lantern, because I really didn't get into Green Lantern until, yeah, that crossover with the Death and Return of Superman. I wasn't into Hal Jordan, um, so Kyle's always been my Green Lantern. So I know a lot of people love Hal, and I'm glad that he's back, but I grew up reading The Adventures of Kyle, so these books meant a lot to me. There's that badass picture of my boy Hal Jordan as the parallax. So this introduces us to a lot of Kyle's supporting characters. It introduces us to his relationship with Donna Troy. Um, but the only thing I will say about this is that the crossover events really bog down the story. I love everything else about this. And, man, this was a really rough time for Guy Gardner. Like, the guy was a shape-shifting alien during this time. Eh, but everything gets fixed later on. Now we have Zero Hour. I wanted to keep it the Green Lantern, but I think this is a really important part of the Green Lantern stories. And this is when, well, I can't get into it. There is an omnibus coming out, but if you ever want to check out what this has to do with the Parallax and Kyle Rayner and the Green Lanterns, I suggest getting the trade paper back or going this route. Next up is Baptism of Fire. This collects issues 59, and then it jumps to 66 and 67, and then 70 through 75. Yeah, these collections back then weren't the greatest. The paper quality was kind of crappy. Uh, the binding is horrible. Like, I think it's just glued binding, and it just, these books were known for falling apart. During this time, Kyle is kind of learning to be a Green Lantern, because all he was was just a kid, and he was an artist. He wasn't really a hero. So I think this run is pretty important because this is where he starts teaming up with a lot of Hal Jordan's old friends. And he kind of starts finding his grounding. And during this time, his relationship with Donna Troy comes to an end. Of course, who breaks up with the hotness that is Donna Troy? Kyle freaking Rayner, that's who. 
And you may be able to tell, this is uh, early Paul Pelletier's artwork. Love that guy's stuff. But Daryl Banks is still drawing this as well. But he is joined by Paul Pelletier by now. Now we have Emerald Knights. I will say that before this, though, this is another part of the show where I plug a book in that is not up there so people don't take snapshots. But there is an Emerald Allies trade paperback. But I think that's more of a Green Lantern or a Green Arrow story. So that's why I keep it with my Green Arrow. So when I do a comprehensive reading order of Green Arrow, you will see that on there. But that does collect issues 76 and 77 and 92 of Green Lantern. Uh, but let's talk about this. This is more of a Green Lantern story. I love this story. Uh, it's a crappy trade paperback. It is Emerald Knights collecting issues 99 through 106 and Green Arrow number 136. Uh, drawn by Jeff Johnson, uh, still Daryl Banks. But the basic story is that Kyle is sent time traveling and he ends up with Hal Jordan in his early career as a Green Lantern. I love this kind of stuff when it happens. Now, Kyle's able to return to a present time, but he drags Hal Jordan with him. And then Hal quickly discovers that he's not the good guy that he once was. He discovers the fate of Coast City, which I'm not going to spoil for you. And then his old friends show up only to suspect Hal Jordan of being an evil villain. So I absolutely love this story. And this starts the relationship between Jade, who's Alan Scott's daughter, and Kyle Rayner. And I think that's very important because that comes into play later on. Now, next up is Final Night. Not Green Lantern on the title, but I think it's very important to read. It's uh, Carl Kessel and Ron Mars, the guy that was writing Green Lantern. It's about the Sun Eater. There's a creature known as hey, Pharaoh Lad. There's a there's Guy Gardner as an alien. And there's a creature that's eating our sun. Something has to happen. And without giving it anything away, if you want to read about how Hal Jordan becomes the Spectre, you got to read this and Day of Judgment. Now we've got about 20 or so issues in between the last trade paperback and this one. This is New Journey, Old Path. Now Ron Mars is off the book and Judd Winnick takes over. And Judd Winnick was actually the only thing I knew him from before I started reading this stuff was the real world i don't know if you all even remember that mtv show and he i think he was in season three or season two season three i think the one in california uh but anyway now we have judd winnick on the book and we have the returns of the man hunters and they go after kyle because he is holding the last lantern ring and then we are introduced to the yellow ring now, that yellow ring is given to a mental patient who can use it in ways never thought possible, right? To purge evil from the Earth. And then, with the help of other superheroes like Superman, Batman, and Alan Scott, they take him down. And, you know, it was an okay start for Judd Winnick's run. But honestly, Judd Winnick is the run that I end up loving. And it is why Kyle Rayner is my Green Lantern. So let's move on to the next issue, because... This one here collects issues 129 to 136. And there is Kyle, still with Jade, keeping it real. Next up, we have The Power of Ion. Now, before this trade paperback, the word Ion had been thrown around a little bit, but this is the one that introduces us to what Ion is. We have this beautiful back cover by Jim Lee, because at this time, to bump up sales, Jim Lee is drawing some of the covers. Judd Winnick and Del Eaglesham and... Jamal Eigel are some of the characters, or I'm sorry, some of the artists and creators that are still working on this book. And this book right here, uh, I guess the way I describe it is Kyle's been one of those characters so far that has always had underdeveloped powers. But he has so much potential, and he doesn't see it in himself. And this is the volume that he really starts shining for me, and it's due to Judd Winnick. This is where he becomes the power of the ring, if you will. And there's a reason why he is the most powerful ring bearer amongst the Green Lanterns. Now, he gets powerful enough, and this isn't much of a spoilers, but I'm going to explain what Ion is during this time. It's pretty much he becomes a being of godlike status, and he doesn't have to recharge his ring anymore, because he's gotten to the point where he's almost become one with... The, the Green Lantern, and he becomes this character known as Ion. 
this guy right here, who is a complete badass and shows up later on in the Green Lantern comics. Moving on to Brother's Keeper, another Jim Lee cover. And this collects issues 151 through 155 and Green Lantern Secret Files and Origins number three. So let's look at this. Now, Del Eaglesham is the main artist on the book. Judd Winnick is still writing it. And so, how do I explain? This one is pretty much the entire city is driven insane by a character named Brainwave, who pretty much makes people see things. And this issue actually probably means a lot to Judd Winnick. Um, if you know anything about him, he had written a book before about his friend that was in the real world who ended up dying of AIDS complications back in the early 90s. But there's a story in here that his friend, Kyle's friend, gets nearly beaten to death because people find out that he's gay. And Kyle finds the one of the attackers and ends up breaking his wrist until he gives up the names of the other two. Now, Kyle doesn't want justice that way. He wants to travel back in time to stop this from happening, but the Justice League found out and they won't let him. That is another thing I wanted to say too, is during this time, Kyle was part of the Justice League. This particular volume is really heartbreaking. And since he's not allowed to travel back in time, uh, he lets out his rage another way. If out of all of these Green Lantern books that I'm like that I'm talking about here, uh, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. It's I think it's pretty cheap still, but it really gives you a taste of that Judd Winnick writing style and a good look at who Kyle Rayner is. Now, sadly, I get to talk about the final trade paperback. Um, yeah, these trade paperbacks weren't greatly put together. Uh, it makes me sad because we could have had so much more with those Kyle Rayner books that I showed earlier, but they were canceled. I don't know if it was due to sales or just due to DC losing an interest in it. But hey, maybe they'll watch my video where it's my DC most wanted omnibuses and they'll be like, hey, this guy's got the map and we can totally do some Kyle Rayner omnis. It'll only take us about four or five at most. Wishful thinking on my part. So we have Passing the Torch and that's this book right here. Hey, collecting issues 156 to 161. So after all the things that have happened to Kyle in his life, he decides to leave Earth for a while and goes back up in the space with Jade, who is still his girlfriend at the time. Awesome. And again, like I said, Alan Scott's daughter. And this leaves Jon Stewart to be the Green Lantern of Sectors 2814, or at least the protector of Earth. And it's pretty much the story of how Kyle and Jade have to go save one of the Guardians and how Jon Stewart is adjusting to life on Earth as the sole Green Lantern. Sadly, there was nothing else collected past this because this run of Kyle Rayner as Green Lantern ends in issue 181. And after that, now this omnibus right here makes it so easy to collect the Jeff Johns stories, uh, but so hard to read the stories um, because, well, I'll explain. There's a nice little sketch by Ethan Van Skyver who to me is my definitive Green Lantern artist. Despite of how him and I differ in views on life, I don't care. The dude is still a badass artist. So, the next thing to read is Green Lantern Rebirth, right? It is the return of Hal Jordan. For years, he's been the Spectre, which is the spirit of vengeance in the DC Universe, and he comes back as a Green Lantern. He's back, alive, and is the Green Lantern again, without gray hair, because he no longer possesses fear. So, awesome, he's back, great. Now, this omnibus collects this. As a matter of fact, okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what this omnibus collects. It collects Green Lantern Rebirth 1 through 6, not to be confused with the Rebirth title that we'll talk about later. Those are the Rebirth years that is known as the DC Rebirth event. This is actual Green Lantern Rebirth. Uh, then Cre Green Lantern Core Recharge 1 through 5, Green Lantern 1 through 25, the ongoing series, Green Lantern Core 14 through 18, Green Lantern Sinestro Core Special, Green Lantern Secret Files 2005 number 1, Telson and Sinestro Core Superman Prime, and Green Lantern Sinestro Core Secret Files 1. But what we are going to be talking about is a portion of this omnibus because I don't want to jump too far 
uh, into Sinestro Corps. We'll talk about the Sinestro Corps in part two of this. So, what I suggest is reading Rebirth of Green Lantern, then reading issues one through nine, which are the No Fear and the Revenge of the Green Lanterns. Uh, well, the beginning of the Revenge of the Green Lanterns storyline. Uh, so, yes, it is the return of Hal Jordan. He's back as the Green Lantern of Sector 2814. And he is reuniting with his family and old friends. Uh, then move on to Green Lantern Core Recharge 1 through 5. Also collected in this omnibus. Not only is Hal Jordan back as a Green Lantern, but he has recharged the Green Lantern Core. So there's a huge lot of Green Lanterns out there now. A lot of rings selecting different people. So the reason I'm giving you the titles of the trade paperbacks is so you can read them like that, or you can read them through this omnibus, like I said. So, so far, read Rebirth, the six-issue miniseries, collected in this or in trade paperback, and then read Green Lantern Ongoing 1 through 9. Then read Green Lantern Core Recharge, which is collected in here, or you can read it in trade paperback like this. After Recharge, pick this up. This is Green Lantern Core to be a lantern not collected in here sadly so this collects issues one through six of the ongoing series uh, dave gibbons is still writing it and he manages to make each of his cast members distinct because there's a lot of green lantern core that were introduced in the recharge miniseries uh, the, the stories literally revolve around the idea of what it costs to be a Green Lantern. So we are introduced to new characters like Dr. Natu. And there's a murder mystery that happens within the first few pages. Actually, the last half of the book focuses on Guy Gardner. And actually, but that's, this story is really entertaining in the back here. So now that you've read issues 1 through 9 of Green Lantern and Green Lantern Core all the way to, um, to be a lantern, the next book to read is Infinite Crisis. Uh, I think I talk about this book every single time, but the Green Lantern play a huge part. And one year later is about to happen. So I think it's very important to read this, especially the Ranthanagar War. And that's where Kyle's hanging out at the time. He's still Green Lantern. And he's still trying to figure out what to do with his life. Because now that Hal's back, he no longer is the sole 2814 Green Lantern. Something happens within those pages. One of his supporting characters ends up dying, and I'm not going to reveal who that is, but it does affect him. Then we have one year later. And when I said the thing that happened to one of his supporting characters affected him, it does. Because Kyle Rayner is back to being Ion again. And this is Ion the Torchbearer. It's the first six issues of the Maxi series. It is written by Ron Mars, the creator of Kyle Rayner, and drawn by... What is his name? Greg Tonacci, I think. Tocini. Tocini, I'm sorry. And his artwork is really hit and miss. Some of the faces look really odd. Some of the panels look great. Uh, but anyway, it's not a review of the book. So yes, Ron Mars returns to his beloved creation. And Kyle Rayner is back to being Ion. Which means he has this godlike power again. And he doesn't need the power ring anymore. Now, in the first volume here, Kyle finds himself being accused of destroying an entire space fleet. However, he doesn't remember doing that. And he has a bounty on his head, and the Guardians seem to know everything that's going on behind the scenes. So that's the next one to read, which takes us back to this omnibus with the story called Wanted. And that is Green Lantern issues 10 through 20. Uh, let's see, now we still have Ethan Van Skyver, Carlos Pacheco on artwork, and Jeff Johns, of course, writing the book. And this is pretty much the story of Hal Jordan and how he's framed for murder on international borders. And the world is seeing him as a menace again. On top of that, someone has put a price on his head. Sounds very familiar to the Ion story, right? And then we have a Star Sapphire arc that sets up events in Blackest Night. But we won't talk about Blackest Night right now. That will be in the second part. Oh, I love this, this scene right here. So awesome. And then we have Ivan Reyes on artwork. And Return of the Cyborg Superman, who was a big menace during the issue 46 that I talked about. That was very important to read. And that's why. Uh, we have Superboy Prime, who was a big key player in Infinite Crisis, and that's why I wanted you to read that. See, it all comes together, and it all helps that most of that stuff was written by Jeff Johns. 
I'm not going to tell you who this character is, but he's very important to Hal's past. So anyway, on top of the Star Sapphire story, we also have behind the scenes here characters being summoned to join the Sinestro Corps. And what is the Sinestro Corps? You'll have to watch part two for that, but I'm sure Wikipedia can help you or other YouTube videos. Uh, and I'm sure by now most of you all know what the Sinestro Corps is. But I won't give spoilers away still. So once you get done with issues 10 through 20 of Green Lantern, the wanted issues, we are done with this omnibus for now. Don't worry, this will play a key in part two as well. Which takes us to volume two of Ion Guardian of the Universe, The Dying Flame, collecting the last six issues of Ion. And so issues seven through 12. Now this has to be read after reading Wanted, or I suggest reading it that way. And this pretty much finds Kyle further acclimating himself with his new uh, found abilities again, being the power of Ion. And Ron Mars does a really nice job of tying up loose ends from the things that happen in Infinite Crisis. And you get an appearance by his ex-girlfriend Donna Troy, which is really nice. So I'm glad that he included her in here again. And Guy Gardner shows up along with uh, the new Captain Adam, which I, I really like that team up. I will say that this uh, volume has a really sad ending that I was not a big fan of. But you know what? If it helped propel the character of Kyle and set him up for... Well, that's a big spoiler there for Armageddon, but it's not an Armageddon reading order. Uh, actually, that is funny because that was the original ending to Armageddon 2001. And because the writer found out about the internet... They were able to, or was it a 900 number you could call? They changed the ending. Uh, anyway, old guy, old Omar talking. So anyway, this book has a really sad ending, but it does set up what happens to Kyle in the next story arc. Which takes us to the final volume of this comprehensive reading order, and this is Green Lantern Core, The Dark Side of Green. Collecting issues 7 through 13 of Green Lantern Core. Again, not collecting in an omnibus. Sadly, we don't have an omni of this stuff. Uh, the first half of this deals with the darker commando unit within the core known as the Corpse. And then Guy Gardner deals with some interesting moral issues about using deadly force. Now that's funny because of what happens later on during the Sinestro Corps and Blackest Night. And then the second story is pretty cool too because we get the character of Mogo back. Mogo is the living planet that is part of the Green Lantern Corps who's a really peaceful character. And it's like a fungal attack, making them go crazy, uh, including Mogo and Kilowog. Now we have some artwork by Dave Gibbons, again, and he is still writing the book. And if you're a fan of Watchmen, you'll really enjoy, like I do, looking at his artwork again with modern colors. But we also are introduced to Patrick Gleason, who becomes a myth and legend all to his own for drawing the Green Lantern Corps. That is part one of the comprehensive reading order of Green Lantern. Let me know in the comments down below what you would have added. Like I said, I'm just sticking to the Green Lantern title. I didn't want to get into Red Lanterns or One Shots, but I feel like I added the stories that needed to be read and plugged in some other stories that I strongly suggest reading. Again, thank you to our patrons for voting for this particular reading order. You guys could have made it so much easier on me if I had done something of a shorter run, but no, that's okay. There are a lot of fun to put together if I had done something of a shorter run, but no, that's okay. There are a lot of fun to put together, and the reason I started doing this is because I wish there had been videos like this when I first started reading in collected editions. So if I can help someone out, it made my day a lot brighter. Man, that sounds lame. I sound like a freaking Care Bear. If you do enjoy our channel, please think about supporting us through Patreon where you have exclusive early access to videos. And you get a chance to vote on what comprehensive reading order I do next. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, and the notifications button to let you know when we go live with an episode. Check out our sponsor Cheap Graphic Novels awesome sale right now. Funny enough that it's a Marvel sale, but hey, at least it got you there. And check us out on social media at Near Mint Con. We are found on Instagram. Twitter, and Facebook. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two and part three, which will be coming out later this month. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.